Hi, I'm Ben from Universal Audio, and in today's video, I'm joined by guitarist Corey Wong, who many of you will recognize from his work with the band Wolfpack. He's gonna walk us through how he uses an Apollo and UAD plugins to get incredible clean guitar tones using just a few easy to use plugins. Let's check it out. So you kind of become the king of clean guitars, and at least in the internet world. <laughs> uh, sure. So you know, you've, obviously, your playing technique is is pretty unique. Uh, yeah. But really, what I kind of wanted to learn a little bit more about is like sonically, you also you know what you're doing. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. I do know what I'm doing. Uh -huh. At least I, you know, I have my way of doing what I do, whether it be the right way or not. Whatever. It's just like I. I have my ways to get my sound, and it just happens to be that I use this exact stuff to get my sound when I'm recording. That's uh, really cool. So when I record at home, and even in a lot of studios, the majority of what I do is just direct guitar, mm -hmm. and every Wolfpack song or Fearless Flyer song that you've heard me play guitar on is just direct. Just straight in? Direct in, and sometimes we use like a like a DI to have a little amp in the room because we don't use headphones. So there's a little bit of amp noise that maybe you'd hear a tiny bit of bleed into the drum mics, mm -hmm. but it's pretty quiet. But uh, what you hear is mostly just the direct guitar sound because that's all that we're recording. Nice. Um, so to get my sound, the, the first thing that I start with is a compressor. Mm -hmm. And different people have different ideas of what compressors are great for the guitar. I happen to love the API 2500. Okay. But the, the main reason is because it has a mix knob. Yes. So go to, just put the mix at 50%. And we're already halfway there. Wow. So uh, turn it off. Uh huh. And on. So it sounds, that basically just kind of gives me a little squeeze, mm -hmm. feels a little bit better to me. It just kind of tightens some of the little things, but because the mix is only at 50%, I still get the nuance of all the extra stuff. Yeah, well that was something we were talking about a little bit earlier too, is uh, compression sounds great, but too much of it, it just starts feeling choked and yeah. you kind of take the life away from it. So yeah. it's great having a wet dry knob like that. Yeah, totally. You know, just to get the best of both worlds. Yes. And I have two, basically two different approaches that I use to recording clean guitar. Mm -hmm. One is, am I going to use an amp sound or not? Oh, okay. Um, as far as amp tones go, I'm not super precious about them. Uh -huh. uh, but I love it when amps don't break up at all. Yeah. But I still kind of like a little bit of that tube saturation thing, mm -hmm. whatever. The so that's great. Yeah. So let's start without an amp. Mm -hmm. So let's go like third block down yeah. and then we can add an amp in later. Okay. Uh, like an SSL channel strip, any mm -hmm. any one of them, legacy or not or what, whatever you, I'm not. Kind of just depends on how much DSP you got, right? <clears throat> yeah. So. And which one you've purchased. <laughs> exactly. Which one is in your account? <laughs> so I will typically roll off a little low end. Mm -hmm. You use the high pass for that? Yep. So I high pass. Mm -hmm. uh, other producers like to do 150 on my guitar. I like to do 90 ish. Uh -huh. Yeah, keep a little somewhere bit. Somewhere in, in there, keep a little bit, and then whatever. Yeah. And then I, I like to dip a little bit around 4K. Yep. Just a tiny bit. Okay. And sometimes I'll take. I'll take a tiny bit of the top end out too. Mm -hmm. Somewhere around there. That's. I mean, kind of where it defaults is just like a good spot. Mm -hmm. Why would you yep. trim those back? One of the qualities that an amp brings is that it takes some of that super high-end stuff out. Mm -hmm. Filters. And out. especially like the, the way that you would notice it the most is if you used overdrive without an amp and we were just going direct. It'd be really buzzy, mosquito-y. People uh -huh. use that adjective or whatever. Yeah. Um, so this kind of tames some of that without using an amp. Gotcha. For me, it's just my, my ear mm -hmm. wants to leave some of that stuff to the actual hi-hats and, yeah. and other things within a mix. And of course, it kind of depends on on how what I'm playing sits in a mix, but I would I would prefer my I prefer the percussive side of my guitar to feel more like a shaker than a hi hat. Ah, I like that analogy for it. So a just kind of where it, yeah mm -hmm. yeah. Some people they would think that man I can't have a guitar without an amp, but sure. it's fully clean. You said this is based like a Nile Rodgers kind of a Prince. Yeah, a lot of the Prince thing. I grew up in Minneapolis, and I remember talking to a lot of the cats that I grew up. You know, as as an apprentice under, mm -hmm. we talk about recording with Prince or for him, and see him just plugging right into the SSL, 
and just using that for a lot of his direct sounds. Wow. And you yeah. can kind of tell with some of that. Even mm. So you can get, it's nice, clean, kind of feels like it's right, right here, there, yeah. which I like. I like that sort of thing. And then for me, if somebody wants to mix in a little bit of room sound, sure, that's fine. But for most of my music, I like my rhythmic thing to be pretty dry. Keep it really up front. And that's, that's complete generalization. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes if I do want to add a little room, I add the Ocean Way. Oh, yeah. This is like my go-to to just add. Oh, it's dope. Dude, it's insane. Like, I can't afford to go to Ocean Way every day, except yeah, yeah, I can yeah. pull it up in here. Do you have a favorite spot? I just use the close. Mm -hmm. And uh, a little darker. Yep. Yeah, that's cool. Imagine that. The one that says guitar sounds a little better for guitar. <laughs> Was that you? <laughs> You're the one who named this setting guitar? So that adds just a little bit of space. Ton Not a lot, but it kind of just gives it a little mm -hmm. thing. Well, something for in between the notes, right? Because when you're playing, it's still, you're up front, but yeah. then in those little gaps and spaces, just having a little stereo interest, having a little sauce kind of behind it, yeah. always feels pretty good. Love it. It's wow. great. Dude, all right, I'm gonna. So my this is pretty much my. Save as <laughs> the Corey Wong special. That's right. I'm gonna save that one for later. And then if I want to give a little more of the amp thing, mm -hmm. for me, this is a trick that I learned from Jack Stratton from Wolfpack. He, the way that he has sometimes mixed my guitar is using a little bit of a bass amp. Oh, really? Instead of a electric guitar amp, because the electric guitar amp sometimes has a lot more bite mm -hmm. and is starting to do the two breakup thing. Yeah. So what I like to use is the Ampeg SBT-R. Yeah. And uh, would you keep the API and the SSL on there still too? Or? Yes. Yeah. And I actually, I put the amp after the API. Oh, really? Nice. So that way the API acts a little more like a compressor pedal. Gotcha. Like the way that I use my compressor pedal is a little compressor, about 50%. Uh -huh. Like I use the, the Wampler Ego compressor. Yeah. And my main thing that I like about it, it has some attack and release stuff and it has a little bit of tone shaping. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing is the way that it works with the mix knob is great. Yeah. And this for me like does the same thing. I know it's probably a completely different circuit, whatever. Actual guys that know about <laughs> this sort of stuff would like say they're completely different sounds. To me, they accomplish the same thing that I want to accomplish. Yeah, which is the tone that you're yeah. chasing. Yep. So uh, I do the compressor, then I go Ampeg SVTR. Mm -hmm. Typically, because it's a bass amp, it's gonna have a lot more low end. So I'll oh, usually yeah. put the mid range at about three o'clock, mm -hmm. bass at nine o'clock. Yep. Uh, put treble, treble at three. And then just kind of clean up the low end from there. So with this, maybe, maybe take off cut. the SSL. Uh huh. Let's take that guy. Out. Pull the mids back a little bit. A little more. Uh, put it at like two two o'clock and yeah. bring the bass back up a tiny bit. Right there. Yeah. So there it's got a little bit of the amp thing. Yeah. And it depends on what the what the role of this guitar is. Sometimes if it's just the this works better for that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes if I'm doing the bigger chords, actual thicker voicings, yeah. I don't need the amp, but sometimes if I want a single note line to have a lot of meat to mm. it, I'll do the bass amp thing and yeah. it's not necessarily breaking up. That sort of thing, and it feels great. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, uh, so I like that. And occasionally, mm -hmm. I'll use the Marshall instead of the SVT. Yeah, instead of the SVT, sometimes what I'll use is a Marshall. Which one? The one that looks like a the Blues Breaker or nope, the, the uh, Plexi. Ah, the Plexi. Plexi Classic or Super Lead. Classic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now this I. I turn the volume to like almost zero. <laughs> Just inch above zero. Yeah. You can see it's really, it's really brittle compared to the other. So yeah. I pull the treble way back. Way back. Oh, I recognize that. Yeah, now pull the volume back even more. Even more. There we go. <laughs> and then I turn up it on on the master mm -hmm. because this this Marshall likes to break up really fast. So I'll sometimes turn the master up, mm -hmm. and I'll even try to go lower on that volume to make it. Yeah. Now turn the turn the presence down a little bit uh -huh. and the mids down a little bit. It sounds a little more like a guitar amp. Yeah, it really. But <laughs> no guitar player in the world wants to have their amp at like 0.1. I know. Which, you know, it's it's fine. This amp was, I'm sure, designed and made to play at higher gain and to crank it. Uh -huh. But for what I'm doing. Yeah, you're going for clean. Yeah, I just want it super clean, but I like the sound of this amp. Yeah. This amp sounds dope. Mm -hmm. So if it's really quiet on the volume, but then I just boost the master with the. With the yeah, the yeah and the master here. Bus, yep. Then it's. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Put that one back in the ocean way. And uh, sometimes then what I'll do is I'll put in front of it mm -hmm. the whatever your tube screamer plugin is. Uh, I forget yeah. what you call it. Yeah, it's on the guitar and bass. The yes, TS the over TS overdrive. Just if I need a little, a little buzz in there. Yeah, but if you turn off the amp, mm -hmm. you can see that the that glassy top end without the SSL yeah. seems to be less desirable to a lot of guitar players, depending on what you're doing. Like if I was playing lead lines, mm -hmm. it wouldn't sound as awesome. Yeah. Whatever. Maybe, yeah. Uh, but like these are pretty much the plugins that I use for my guitar stuff. Oh, and then actually a lot of times on the end of it, I'll just put that oxide tape plugin. Ah, yep. I love that. Because then you're getting... That's a sick plugin. Mm -hmm. Because that one's just like... It's the easiest easy. to use. It's so easy. I just put it on. I don't even know what any of the stuff does. You don't have to. I put, don't care. No, it doesn't. It just like gives it a little thing. Uh huh. You know. So let's go. No tube screamer and come here just with the oxide. Yeah. And it. It just adds a little Yeah. Thing. It adds some little life, some depth to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Well.
Thanks so much to Corey for sharing all those incredible tips and tricks on getting great clean guitar tones using Apollo and UAD plugins. If you want to learn more about any of the products or plugins featured in this video, just head to uaudio.com and I'll see you guys next time.